There's a lot of history to be seen on this area. This used to be the highest residential area in the city of Seattle before the expansion of the A lot of the old brick buildings still remaining in the town. And it has since been displaced by towers everywhere. And here, folks, is First Avenue. On our way down to Pike Place Market, I'll give you a little bit of history on Pike Place Market. Market was established in 1914 and has been in continuous operation ever since by edict of the City of Seattle Council. It was established as a place for people downtown to be able to get a fair shake on buying goods and services. And it's one of the oldest continuously operational farmers markets in the United States of America. However, there is one in Pennsylvania that's got to speed by a couple years, having been founded in 1764. Amish Market in Pennsylvania has been running ever since. There are over 40 different places to eat at Pike Place Market. There are three different levels that you will soon see on the back side of Pike Place Market. The theme at Pike Place Market are... This comes through the mic every now and then. It makes me feel like I'm some sort of cheesy DJ at a wedding getting a lot of background mic feed going on. <laughs> animals in so people would have a clean experience buying their food. And when I say animals, I'm not talking like a service Pomeranian dog or anything. They didn't have those back in the 19-teens. I'm talking bringing your cow or your pig to market. They were not allowed on the front side of the market. So people wouldn't be in contact with any of the, uh, let's say, bodily fluids that come out of the animals, if you will. And as we take a right around the corner, folks, do the coach is uh, driving fast. However, because this will take us roughly about 10 to 15 minutes to come to the market, if you need to like grab a shot on the left-hand side of the coach, please get up and take your picture. When people search for the city of Seattle on Google Images, this is one of the first images that will pop up on the first page. The very iconic Pike Place Market. Over 400 people call the Pike Place Market home by living down here renting. I'll show you a couple of my favorite places I like. He worked for the company called John Crawford LLC. And he championed Seattle to keep their historical neighborhoods intact for future generations to be able to enjoy them. In the 1970s, Seattle fell upon a little bit of a recession, and we didn't get our mojo back until the mid-1980s. And Seattle actually was going to tear down the Pike Place market. This park here is in remembrance of him. The two totem poles there, folks, are not done by Northwest Native Indians. They are done by Alaskan and Canadian Indians that get to the city. And on the right-hand side of the coach, you'll see the extension of the Pike Place Market. And a better view, folks, as we trip, we'll be taking a lot on Yesler, named after the first business owner in Seattle, Henry Yesler. Skid Row, by any chance? Yes. Yeah. And some people, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You've heard of the band? Oh, right on. Cool. I have too. Skid Row people often think as we're down on the right-hand side of the coach. Folks, before we hit the wonderful Sinking Chip Garage, is the oldest restaurant in Seattle called the La Vera. There are about wanting to go. And on the left-hand side of the coach, folks, is the Sinking Ship Garage. Isn't that a beautiful object? With all this wonderful Victorian brick going on, this is Occidental Avenue South, folks, which terminates down at Occidental Square, which will be beneath where they toss the fish. And I did have a, a, a guest this last summer from the UK that do. The London Plain. Cafe Umbria is down the street with Italian ices. 
across the street from us is the UPS Waterfall Garden. And uh, let's meet outside of the street, folks. And we're going to come back here by uh, 2 o'clock and get the show on the road. So. Today, get out of those. Any other questions that anybody needs answered down here, yes or no? Beautiful views of downtown Seattle on the left hand coach. And on the right hand side, folks, is Beacon Hill. Next to downtown Seattle is First Hill or Capitol Hill. city of Seattle and this was also part of that Yukon gold rush money we had that built that really tall building. Seattle played with their income dramatically. And we'll be heading past the and this area too folks is still fresh water and it's not the uh, salt water until we get past the Ballard Locks. Walking trail, like uh, Andreas mentioned, it was awesome to walk at down there. There are two sides of approach to actually uh, check out the locks too. There's the Ballard side, uh, the Magnolia side. After we're done with the locks, we're going to head on up to Magnolia. I'll show you what one of the two, actually two of the better off neighborhoods in Seattle look like, and uh, I'll start. If you feel the need to. There's a Chinook's walk-up window if you want to get some fish and chips to take with. Or if you're eating too much food. Remember, folks, when you're on vacation, calories don't count. <laughs> Neither do carbohydrates. That counts when you get home. And uh, then you can have a seven-day class.